Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Reference Point. I'm your host, Dave Cokerhook. This is a special evening here on Reference Point because I am very privileged to have the executive director of KMVT, which is the host station where we film uh, Reference Point. Shelley Wolf is here with me today, and, uh, and I'm really glad she is because this is one of the first opportunities that we've had to have you on our show. So, Shelley, welcome to Reference Point. Thank you for having me, Tom. Tom? Tom. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cut. No, cut. That's all right. Hey, it's good. What a kick. So I've embarrassed you already, yes. which is good because we got all kind of... But you've been here at KMVT now for how long? Uh, a little over four and a half years. Four and a half years. Yeah. But the station has been here uh, a lot longer than that, yeah. right? So KMVT actually started back in the 70s and uh, didn't really become its own nonprofit, though, until 1982. So. 1982. And yeah. so we are a, a nonprofit organization, yes. which is very cool. And you've been here for four and a half years, which is pretty cool. But you, that's not the, your first uh, activity in Community Access TV, is that right? That's correct. That's correct. So I've been doing this for about 17 and a half years. So I started out at Pacifica Community Television here in Pacifica, California. And then I um, was there for almost, I don't know, I guess 10 years. And then I went went back into the music industry and did some sales and marketing. And then oh. uh, decided I really miss community television. And so I actually accepted a job up in Massachusetts um, running a TV station. And then four and a half years ago, Where I came here. Where in Massachusetts? Uh, Fitchburg. Fitchburg. Yeah. So where's I, Fitchburg? Fitchburg relative to Boston. Um, north. So about an hour north. An hour north, straight yeah. up 93. Yeah, uh, yep. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so. See, I, I lived in New Hampshire for a number of years. Okay. Uh, just uh, outside of Concord, and so I'd make the drive down to uh, Boston periodically because okay. that's where you could catch an airplane. There really wasn't much <laughs> opportunity to catch anything at, uh, in Manchester or Concord. Yeah. So. Yeah. But I didn't remember Fitchburg. Okay. Yeah. Well, very cool. So. I got to spin back to something. You said something about spending time in the music industry. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. I, this is a new piece of information for me. <laughs> so I spent a large part of my career uh, managing record stores, working with record labels and distribution companies. Ah. So I actually worked with artists doing sales and marketing, tour management, went on the road, traveled all over the world, making sure records were in stores when there was actually music stores, nice. uh, helping get interviews and uh, making sure that everything was going fine with their tours and products were in place when they were on the road and you know, got them to the radio in the morning to do their morning interviews and oh, to their cool. shows at nighttime. So, so were you doing that before your first uh, activity in community television? I was, yes. So what brought you into Community Access TV? Uh, I was living in the Bay Area and I got interested in cameras and had been interested in cameras and filming for a long time but just really didn't know how to get involved and it was very pricey at the time so at the time you know consumer cameras were coming out and I wanted to start creating a documentary. San Francisco had so much rich history and I thought I really need to figure out how to do this and someone said well have you heard of community television and I said no what is that and so Pacifica had one in its backyard so I started taking classes and the next thing I knew I was there every night and crewing on shows and loved it and got my experience that way. The next thing I knew, you know, almost four years later, I was running a TV station. Oh, how funny <laughs> so, is that? Very so, cool. Yeah. So are you from the Bay Area originally? No, I'm actually from Rockford, Illinois. So, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So. Got it. Yeah. No, I've kind of lived all over. I left uh, left there and went to Arizona and then uh, spent some time in Southern California and then moved up to the Bay Area. So. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. So has the music thing that you did, that, with all the activity of working with artists, mm -hmm. with uh, uh, um, promotion and, and coordinating marketing efforts and stuff like that. Has that served you well in your position in uh, Community Access TV? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think there was a large crossover through that. So I think, you know, being able to prioritize and manage, you know, different types of personalities because in community television you're working with volunteers and staff. So there's a lot of um, personalities that come into play um, and just a lot of time management of things that need to happen, but also just the promotion and marketing and outreach. So, you know, you really have to have an outgoing person that can be in, in these types of jobs. <laughs> and willing right. to put in the hours no matter what time of day or night it is. So. Sure. So, yeah, absolutely. Well, I want to ask you something about Community Access TV mm -hmm. because, I, I mean, I produce a show here, obviously. It's, you're, you're my guest today, <laughs> so that's very cool. And I tell people all the time that I do a show, and I say, oh, you know, what is it? And I, I try to explain this Community Access television. They don't, you get the kind of like glazed look, and they keep thinking that we're on PBS or mm -hmm. something like mm -hmm. that. So there seems to be some confusion about Broadca standard broadcast TV, cable networks, public broadcasting, community access. 
where does it all fit together and, and how do we define what community access TV is? Sure, so I, you know, I like to explain it to people this way. It's really pretty simple. Um, there's commercial television that's on the networks, right? So those um, folks are all looking for funding through commercialism and stuff like that. So they take commercials, they have ad space, they, um, you know, they're on TV based on viewership and dollars. So right. you have PBS who is an educational channel, but it's still funded, grant funded, and also has some federal funding that does come into it. What makes community television and what we do very unique is it really is the only outlet out there that is uncensored and provides a voice to any community member. So what that means is that in 1984, when cable companies were coming into communities, um, they were asked to, you, to rent the right of way space basically to the cities and they had to pay a fee to the city to run their cables oh, okay. and part of the FCC said well if you're gonna do that then you need to also provide channel space for the voice the community voice because you're you're running into a community and so the great part is that um, the FCC fought for that and the communities accepted that and wanted that as well the um, side part of that was this, a lot of cities didn't want to run the channel. And so that's how many of us all became nonprofits. It's because the city found someone locally to say who's going to run these channels. So as I mentioned earlier, KMVT was around in the 70s and how we were funded at that time was very different than how it's funded today because what happened is um, local cable providers were pro providing grant money. So as a producer, you would have applied for a grant oh. to be able to create programming instead of having an open facility where you could come and produce programming. Okay. So you had to basically apply for a scholarship or a grant, and if you were awarded, then you could go create a TV show, where today anybody can come in and create a television show, and um, most community television stations across the country are now their own independent nonprofits. So uh, from the way you explained that, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that there were uh, fewer, oper fewer producers, fewer shows being produced in that time when if you had to go and submit for uh, some type of a grant or underwriting from... Mm -hmm from a cable company or whatever. Absolutely, absolutely. So how so. did making a nonprofit organization change that that picture? Well, that picture changed because what happened is the money that was being paid into the cities, one, larger cable companies were coming in at that point, and so they weren't local um, or cable companies, but they became larger organizations. And then again, based on the rulings that were passed, in order to run their cables, they basically paid a, a fee to the city. Mm -hmm. And those fees ha were then dictated that a certain percentage had to go back to a community voice. Oh, okay. Well, the cities didn't want to manage that, right? Because it can become very ugly. Like sometimes people want to speak out against the cities or right. you know say things. And again, there's non-censorship. So this was something that cities said, well, we don't want to manage, but we support the fact that people should have a voice. So you know, if there's someone out there that wants to run these organizations, build them then that's they left it to the community to do that and so luckily we had many pioneers throughout our country uh, who did that and one thing that was very exciting about Pacifica Community Television it was actually the very first West Coast uh, TV stations that was actually became a um, public access or community television station on that. the West Coast oh well so, that's cool yeah that's very cool. So they actually won an Emmy back in uh, the '70s for ah. a big flood that happened here in California. So oh, wow. Yeah. So. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. So now, do the cable uh, organizations still provide funding to the cities mm -hmm. for the right of, you know, for the, the right, right of use? Away uh -huh. Yep. Yep, they do, and uh, it's just structured differently. So, um, you know, it's interesting because as um, cable companies become more conglomerates and uh, as media is changing and how we um, correlate it, um, they are now considered a public utility, right? So yeah. they anybody can now become a cable company if they have a telephone license. So that changed in 2006 and uh, through something called the DIVCA Act, which was the Digital Interchange Video uh, Act, I believe it's called. Uh, and so what that did is basically said anybody that comes into business or wants to become a community television station after 2006 received capital money, but they don't get operating funds, right? So we were kind of grandfathered in under some scenarios that that allowed us to still have um uh, working uh, contracts that mm -hmm. allowed us to do work for hire and so through that the cities then basically take the money and are replacing it with work to hire services so that our money's not capped now there's places like San Jose for example where their money's capped and so they have you know millions of dollars for capital and new equipment but they have to go and raise all the dollars for operations for of the operation. Ah, so, interesting yeah so each station will have a slightly different um, 
thing that they have to deal with in order to pr provide the, the funds necessary to run the station, to yeah. get the equipment, and stuff like that. Well, that and also different states. So, for example, California through the DIVCA Act is really one of, I think, three states that has the DIVCA Act in place, mm -hmm. which meant that it turned over um, local um, franchising to state franchising. So, which is, actually is not a good thing because um, or it can be conceived as a good thing or a bad thing, but many of us can look at it as a um, something that can be detrimental because what happens is then the local community doesn't have any control. So as a the city themselves, they have no control over how the quality is or well, making because sure. Because it's run by the state because and not it's run the state. by the city. Exactly. Okay. And then you have conglomerates like in the East Coast, for example, where state is very adamant about um, preserving community television. Mm -hmm. And so they actually have a community access station almost in Every single community, really, and if any cable comes in, cable company comes in, any contract that exists, the next contract has to match that contract. Wow! So it's it, again, each area so is different very parts different. Of the country yeah. have a different understanding and feel for it. So what's it? Why is community access or public access, whatever the right terminology is, why is it important? Well, it's important because it's allowing people to have a voice, right? So um, what happens is I think that we live in a media-rich world, but the challenge is, is do people really have a voice? So, you know, when we watch election coverage going on or we're watching, um, you know, talk shows and stuff like that, it's all very regimented towards different parties and different things that people want you to hear. Right. The thing about um, community access, community media, public television, public access, um, is that people actually have a voice. So, like tonight, you get to have a show and you can talk about whatever you want. So, that doesn't exist anywhere else except for if you were to put something on YouTube. So, right. again, it's really providing communities and residents a, a place to have a real voice on the community cha channel so that the world can see it, right? Or at least your community can see it and hear about right. what's happening in your community. So like when we talked about like the DIVCA Act, for example, whether it was good or bad, when that came in, just throughout California, we lost almost 200 channels. Whoa. So, you know, that those are ways where, again, you're now shutting down the amount of voices that can be heard on a channel, so, hmm. which can show detriment. So how, w with the advent of the internet and the proliferation of uh, all kinds of, um, um, I don't know what you want to call it, but there, you, you can find uh, uh, conversations about almost anything mm -hmm. that way. How does that correlate to what we're doing here through this media? Mm -hmm. So I'd say it's very similar, right? So, and that's another thing that you know sometimes gets looked at, like you know, well, you don't need. Uh, a community access station because everybody can put content on the web. Well, I think one of the things that makes community access unique is we provide a training ground. So we're not just, you know, put your message out there. It's also providing training. So here at KMVT, we pride ourselves on, you know, providing all types of media training. It used to just be television, but I like to look at what we do as just one aspect. So the television side is really one aspect of what we do. Mm -hmm. And the other aspects is we have a real educational forum. So, you know, we train train adults how to you know work in a studio environment how to you know look at the media that they're watching and evaluate it how to make good content. I mean, everyone likes to think they're a videographer now that you know everybody can afford a camera and mm -hmm. you know there is YouTube. So how do you help them understand like there's an importance about lighting or audio or you know not crossing certain lines right. when you're shooting and that sort of yeah. thing. So we get to do that and then we get to work with youth. I mean, we have a very robust youth program um, doing summer camps where we see over 350 kids a year. Wow. And through that, you know, we get to help educate them because again, they're gonna use media in any form of life that they go into, or sure career that they go into yeah, nowadays, sure so, yeah. so yeah. We've got some photos here. I think we got a photo of some activity that you were involved with with uh, some young people. I, and I, uh -huh. I think you're gonna pull that up here and show it. It's, uh, I think there's some uh, scouts or something like that. And I don't know if this was part of the youth camp that you have her or whatnot, but talk to me a little bit more about the camps and the, and the things that, you, that the studio does with youth. Sure, so we offer uh, youth tours. Um, we work with Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts. They're all responsible for earning like journalism badges. And so they come in and they take a tour of the station. They get to come up here and learn how to create a public service announcement. Oh, that's um, fun. You know, get to get in front of the camera, the green screen and all that. So for them, it's really exciting. And I 
think, you know, the real young ones probably don't really understand. It's just the exciting part they get to be on TV. But, you know, we talk to them and ask them. And it's actually really fun because, you know, it's always exciting when you hear a five-year-old know what a green screen is, yeah. right? So yeah. it's like, where did you learn that? Um, but those are the things that are fun. And then when we get into the middle school grades, we do a lot of digital literacy programming. So um, we've had actually, I've done some classes where I work with parents and students together. And they, you know, we look at videos. We look at commercials. And we talk about what they're feeling and what the messages they get because mm -hmm. you know again media can be consumed by so many people but so many different ways mm -hmm. so we talk about what that messaging is and how you want to be able to talk with your children about what they're hearing and what they're seeing through visuals um, our summer camps are also again very hands-on so we have hands-on training learning how to do studio productions they learn how to do a game show they have a they get to do a talent show where they bring in their own you know sometimes instruments or a pet or something that's and they talk cool. about something that's important to them um, and then we have advanced classes beyond that so they're like it's an advanced camp we um, have a claymation class um, so they get to do stop-motion animation them. yeah that's fun <laughs> so. well, I've had over the time that I've had the privilege of doing the show I've had several um, young people who were in you know high school age that were members of the crew and have moved on and are in the college and they're doing some stuff in media or journalism or whatever and it's really kind of cool yeah I want to go back to something that just uh, you know, you've mentioned it several times about allowing community access TV, allowing people to have a voice, and that it, it, you, a couple of the times in the, the mentioning it, you use the word censorship mm -hmm. and lack thereof here. So, how does that really play out in this kind of an environment? I mean, there are certain things that you supposedly aren't supposed to do on television mm -hmm. or any kind of thing like that, and. Are, what, are, what are the, the limits? Are, are there parameters? How, how do you have to adjudicate that? Sure, there are parameters. So the FCC has put parameters in place, and basically they're focused more towards PBS channels. So we do s focus on that. Um, you know, there's no slander. There's no, um, you know, porn on TV. Uh, there's no, um, you know, libel. Um, so I think what what it really comes down to is there's no call to action, um, but as long as there's nothing that's hurting anybody or deceiving anybody, then that's where it's at. So you know, luckily here we haven't really had to deal with any issues mm -hmm. um, that that's arisen. But this time, it, again, it's we're not sitting here to censor your shows, right? It. So it's just here's the rules, and we when we do our training with our producers, you know, we give them the guidelines, and they have to sign off that they understand what uh, the FCC rules are and what we're okay. bound to. So, yeah. but again, it's so it's, it's much more like the open. Wild, wild west. It's not the wild, <laughs> wild west, but it is much more open than any other commercial television, even. So, cool. so um, you have, in your four and a half years here, mm -hmm. you have uh, involved yourself quite heavily in the community, mm -hmm. which is fabulous to to see and to watch. Uh, we actually have some a couple of photos here of you at some events. I'm not sure what events they were because I couldn't quite tell. But okay. but I want to talk a little bit about your involvement. In, here's one here. I'm not sure which event that oh, was, yeah. but but your involvement in some of these community activities and um, w w what is it about that for you? Other than the fact that you need. To me, it seems like it's more than, I just need to be a representative of the station mm -hmm. because I'm the executive director. There's more to it for you than that, isn't there? Oh, yes. <laughs> I love being in the community. I love working and knowing who's in my community. So I think, one, obviously, my presence really does help expand who KMVT is. And I think that's the challenge, too. You know, any community television station I've ever been to, we all talk about, like, you know, how do you create awareness about your organization? Mm -hmm. So, one, there is that aspect. So I am out there on behalf representing KMVT, even though I'm doing these other things. But I love giving back. And so for me, I want to learn. I want to give back. The photo that was showing is uh, with John Edwards and Barbara Hofsinger. And basically, they I went through a program through SCORE, Silicon oh. Valley. And uh, they were my mentors. And so uh, I was awarded this year a award for being their success story. Oh, fantastic. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, so that was just one of the things that I do. Again, it's just trying to keep my knowledge up about business and the way things change. And in return, I give back. So I go into Teach classes there as well on oh, social media okay. and video production and work with nonprofits. So okay. it's a give and take. Um, There's another one. What was this yeah. event? So this was the Create TV Award. So oh. um, Create TV has a, a community access station as well. Down and Annie San Folger, Jose, right? yep, yeah, Annie Folger's next to me. She runs Mid Peninsula Television. And you know, we all collaborate together and do work together. And um, so this was the Create TV Awards, and people submit their video content, and it's one of the big fundraisers for K Create TV each year. So 
you've been presented with an opportunity. I have. And, and I'm very excited for you. Um, tell us a little bit about that and what it means for you in terms of w what's the next thing that Shelley's going to be doing. <laughs> sure. Um, so I've been offered an opportunity to work for the School District of Philadelphia and I'm going to be running PSTV, so it's an educational channel. And the really exciting part is I get to build it from the ground up. So it's been a station that's been stagnant for quite so many years, and um, they're looking for someone to come in and, and build it and bring students back into it and provide some life to it. And uh, I'm very excited about the opportunity because I think one of the things that I am really good about when you talk about me being out in the community is I'm able to walk into communities that I don't know mm -hmm. and really get to know the community and build something something from that right. and utilize my resources and my knowledge and uh, and I love building things and I think that's what's been really exciting here at, K at KMBT is that you know we I came in with a goal and a mission we needed new equipment and we uh, needed to figure out a way to raise some funds to do that and so my team and I you know we came up with a plan and you know they did the day-to-day -day and I was able to go out and fundraise and really make community connections and you know now we have all this beautiful equipment that our volunteers get to work so on you achieved your goal we achieved our goal. And I have so. to, I can I can tell people the equipment <laughs> is fabulous. We got new cameras, we got new uh, uh, recording equipment, we got all kinds of wonderful uh, new stuff here and it's just it's really from the standpoint of someone who's involved with creating the shows, it's really, really very cool. So, well done. Thank, Thank you. you for that. so, uh, that's great. Yeah. I want to ask you we, we have just a few minutes left, but I want to ask you you know, you, you've worked with for several community access stations, you've been in integrated into the community access network on mm -hmm. the East Coast, mm -hmm. here on the West Coast. What is it about KMVT? Is there something unique? What's unique about us? I would say what makes us unique is we're one big family. I would say that we have developed a major community that people love to come to and really be involved and bring like-mindedness to and uh, everybody has a great time and you know helps each other out in the needs like we all know we can call on one another when we need to and it's just it's a really refreshing feeling too. That's not yeah. just well, you're not just talking about you and your staff. No, you're I'm actually talking about, talking about because I find that what you just said is very true mm -hmm. for me with respect to uh, if I need assistance on a show. And there are some of the folks that are working on this show here today. Jim Seawright over here, uh, Jim Toon in, in the other room there, Tom Clark, who if they need something, they've got Grace is over here. Mm -hmm. They've mentioned, hey, what about this? And so, you know, we've done some of yeah, that stuff too. No, so it's. No, the volunteers are our family. Like yeah. we couldn't do our job without the volunteers, right? Yeah. So you guys are all producing shows and volunteering your time. So we appreciate that and working on shows. And, you know, it's just built a real community environment. I get a lot of people who walk through our front door and say that they love being here because mm. they feel it's a community and a community that they can relate to. Oh, and I cool. think that's really, really important. So. How many shows are produced here right now, approximately? Approximately anywhere from 30 to 40 per month. 30 to 40 per month and per that's month. from through the volunteers that's, that's not correct. whatever you guys do because I know that no. the, the studio does the local high school sports mm -hmm. and st stuff like yeah, that that's all separate so we consider the stuff that we do local origination programming so we have just a, our own independent show called Silicon Valley nonprofits and then the sports and then any specialty things that come up for like the Mo Veterans Day memorials or art and wine or the tree lighting and things like that but right. other than that all all those are independent producers producing shows. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's very cool. And it's all topics. I mean, it's interview shows, cooking shows, music shows. So it's yeah. it's fantastic. Yeah, it's quite a quite a variety. Yeah. You know, and I've actually had some. I, I don't know how how uh, people find the station if they're just Joe and Jane living somewhere and maybe they're split, flipping channels. But I had someone. Uh, tell me one time, I, said, I saw you on, you were, you were. <laughs> so yeah, I have a show on TV and stuff like yeah. that. And it's really cool. Now, the other thing that's really neat is that it's possible to, ex to have m the show, that you, like this show that I'm doing, mm -hmm. broadcast through other stations. Absolutely. Because the way the network is set up, the mm -hmm. uh, network of stations is set up, it's possible to disseminate and not just have it be in Mountain View. Yes, yes. Talk so, about that for a so second. we used to uh, what's called bicycle shows, and literally someone had to, you know, hand carry a TV show to another sh station. But now with the new technologies, we've been able to do what's called syndication. So a lot of our other community access stations are on the same um, distribution platforms, and so we share a lot of content as well. And it makes it a lot easier for producers as well as cost effective too, yeah. because you know you're not having to make a bunch of DVDs and spending time. It's you upload it, we syndicate it, and what's nice about it is that there's many stations across the country 
country who don't necessarily have a lot of producers or looking for shows maybe like Reference Point that highlights different topics that aren't just local centric mm -hmm. and they're able to put your show on the air and you get seen all over the country. So, yeah, that's so, very cool. You know, and then one of the things we've done here is really pride ourselves on looking at different platforms, right? So we're on Roku and you know that goes out to the world of over 500 million people I think they say that has a Roku box and then you know we've got our YouTube channel which yeah we just really started promoting in the last year and we have almost 5 million views on our channel and nice. so you know we're very excited about that That's so That's very cool. Yeah. Very cool. So you've got this new opportunity you're going to be taking advantage of that, which I think is fabulous by the way. I'm real excited for you. Thank you. We're we're Thank sorry you. to have to, to lose you here because you've been a real wonderful force here and I have to say everything you've said about building this community sort of thing is is demonstrable. So thank you for that. So, but what do you want your legacy to be here at KMVT? Wow, <laughs> that's the tough question. I don't know, I just think that, I, I hope that my legacy is that I was able to bring everyone together and expand our offerings and to, uh, you know, I hope that it carries on. Yeah. yeah so. Well. Yeah. Okay, that was pretty simple. I, I yeah. thought it was going to be take a little bit longer than that to, <laughs> to explain that, yeah. but that's, uh, and I think it will. I mean, you, yeah. you've really got something uh, started here. But I understand that you're, you're not, um, over the next uh, period of time here, or the several months while this transition is taking place, you're going to be... Uh, uh, plugged in. I right? will be plugged in. I want to stay as, as involved with KMVT as I possibly can. So this yeah. has been, uh, I hate to say, call it my baby, but a lot of ways my baby, <laughs> right? Yeah, so, baby, yeah. uh, you know, I'm, it, I care about KMVT a lot. And, you know, taking this job was a real, it was a tough decision, but it was also, I knew I needed a, a new opportunity yeah. that allows me to continue growing. So is there some kind of um, uh, support from the the team, the groups that you've uh, been involved with in your community access uh, activities that are going to be able to carry over? I mean, is there something that we can do to support you in your efforts in Philadelphia? I mean, it's kind of a, it's across the country, I know. Yeah, but. it's a give and take. Um, yeah, no, there's definitely going to be people I need, you know, speaker series people. I'm going to need folks that, you know, can help with all different aspects, the programming, the educational programming that can come on the channel and that sort of thing. So our main focus at the station is really going to be, you know, working with students and that sort of thing, which is exciting because I've actually learned a lot from Bobby, you know, creating wow. his youth programs. Yeah. And uh, so, it, again, just the programs and how we've advanced ourselves here are a lot of tools that I'll be able to utilize over there as well. So Fantastic. Well, yeah. Shelly, we've got to wrap up now. I really right. appreciate you taking time to be here. It's my, an, a real opportunity for me to have a chance to, to speak to you. And ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've learned more about not just KMVT, but about the community access uh, system and, 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 and support it because it's a fantastic opportunity. So thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on Reference Point. Thank you, Dave.